And here is our second tutorial. The second tutorial is going to look at the last two objectives, uh, to be able to identify local maxima and minima, and to be able to identify increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. Okay, so if you can flip over to this part, we're talking about local maxima and local minima. Now, some uh, textbooks and some teachers might refer to these as relative maxima and minima. It's the same thing, local or relative maxima or minima. Basically, what that means is we're trying to find a locality or a relative area where there is a maxima, maximum point. Maxima is just the plural of maximum. So if I'm looking at this um, sketch of a, of, a, of a graph here, I know that this is a top. This is, this is a peak of, of part of the thing. I can localize my, my domain such that there is a, a very top part. Also over here, there's another little peak here. Now I understand that this peak is higher than this peak, but that doesn't matter. There's a, a certain zip code over here where there is a maximum, and there's another different zip code or maybe area code or a, heck, a different state where there is another maximum. So each one of these is called a local maximum. So together, they're called local maxima. And I'll do them all in uppercase because they're maxima. Okay. And at the same point, but on the um, flip side, we've got down here a minimum. Right, we've got a, a, a localized minimum down here and uh, another localized minimum down here. And I shall call them minima. <laughs> okay, so we've got the uh, local, I'm going to do them all in lowercase, minima right here and right here. Okay, so obviously, hopefully, if, if I give you a graph that's on graph paper, you'll be able to just count out the ordered pair and give them to me. If I give them to you as an equation, I need you to be able to speak to the calculator to be able to do that. So let's please get our calculator. If you do not have your calculator, why don't you pause until you go and get the calculator. And we're going to find the local maxima and minima for this um, function. So I need to type this into y equals negative x cubed plus 2x. So I'm going to y equals, and I'm going to be typing negative x. To cube something, I just use the caret negative x cubed and then plus 2x. So there's my function. Plug that in. I like to press zoom 6 just so I get the standard uh, view screen. So I'm going to press zoom and then 6, which is our standard zoom. And everybody should be looking at a graph that looks like that. Yours might not be blue like mine, but mine's nice and pretty. OK, so I can see that we have one maximum right here, and that we have one minimum right here. OK, so I'm going to need to find those two ordered pairs. So first, I'm going to just sketch that so we have this in our notes. Um, just a quick sketch. And I'll do it in blue since my calculator was blue. It, um, I forget what it looked like now. OK, sure. So it came down here and then went up, looked like through 0, 0, and then up here, and then back down here. OK, so this is just a quick little sketch. Let's find these two ordered pairs. Let's start with this maximum right here. So I'm going back to my calc. Whenever I'm trying to calculate something, I'm using the calculate um, up here in the top five buttons. That's the second um, part of the trace. So second and then calc. We've got a list of stuff that we can calculate. I'm interested in the maximum, number four. So I'll press number four. I know that my maximum um, is, look, is about right here. I'd like to know two values that it's in between. I, it looks like it's definitely in between 0 and, let's say, 2. I know that it's in between 0 and 2. So I can just type those in. The calculator is going to ask you three questions. It's going to ask you for a left bound. That's what I'm going to answer with a 0. So I'm going to type in 0 and press Enter. So it, it, I've told it that, I, it's to the, that this is a left bound for my maximum. And now it's going to ask me my second question, right bound. And I know that it's to the right of 0, and it's to the left of 2. So I'm going to make my right bound 2. You could make it really any number, but the calculator gets upset with you if you use too big of a number. So I'm going to put the 2. So I'm going to say 2 and then enter. So basically, um, I've told the calculator that my maximum is in between 0 and 2. And then it asks you a third question about a guess. I usually just press enter again, let the calculator figure it out, and there it is. There should be a nice cursor on your maximum, and the ordered pair is down here, x equals 0.816 
comma 1.089. I'm going to three decimal places unless it otherwise specifies. So this point right here was point, I've already forgotten it. I've got 0.816 and then 1.089. Okay, 0.816 and then 1.089. Again, I want you to go to three decimal places unless it otherwise specifies, and there's our maximum. Now I need to come over here and find my minimum. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to go to second, calculate, but instead of number four, this time I'm looking at number three. So let's go to number three, and it's going to ask me the same exact questions. It looks like I'm going to talk about negative two being my left bound and zero being my right bound, negative two to zero. So I'm going to type in negative two, enter. That'll be my left bound, and then I'm going to answer my right bound question with zero, enter. So I've told the calculator that my minimum is somewhere between negative 2 and 0. And it asks for the guess, so I'm just going to press Enter. And we get our ordered pair, negative 0.816, comma, negative point, uh, excuse me, 1.089. So I'll come over here, and this was negative 0 0.816, comma, negative 1.089. And that's my minima. And these are exact opposite points, and you might have assumed that because it does look like a symmetrical graph, and that means that we must have an odd graph because we have an ordered pair and we have the exact opposite of the ordered pair on the graph, so it looks like it's going to be an odd graph. Okay, that's how you use your calculator to find local maxima and local minima. Next, we're going to be looking at increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. So increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. I've given you a graph here to illustrate. Um, and in this graph, we're going to say that um, when I use x sub 1, we're talking about x sub 1 being on the left of x sub 2. Okay, so we're going, to, we're going to be talking about that. So when we're talking about the function increasing, a function is increasing if and only if x sub 1, f, excuse me, f of x sub 1 is less than f of x sub 2, which means that as long as, like I said, x sub 1 is on the left side of x sub 2, um, as long as our function of the first one is less than the function of the second one, then we have an increasing part. Now that might just be a very scientific way of just saying that it's this piece right here. We all know as we read our graph from left to right that this is the piece that is increasing. I'm talking about, let's say that x1 is right here and that x2 is right here. x1, the f of x1 is right here, f of x2 is right here. So as long as f of x1 is less than f of x2, then we must be on an increasing curve, on an increasing por portion of the curve. Okay, so we need to talk about when we're increasing here. Increasing, decreasing, and constant is always just about the x-axis. We're interested in the chunks of the x-axis where we are increasing. We have no need to look up or down. Really, we never really look up or down unless we're talking about range. Okay, so everything else is just chunks of the x-axis. So I know that I'm increasing from this ordered pair to this ordered pair, but that's not how I describe it. I describe it as the interval from negative 6 to negative 1. This is where I'm increasing, from negative 6 to negative 1. I know it's tough for your eyes not to see that you're going up from this point to this point, but try to train your eyes to see the chunk of the x-axis, the chunk of the domain that you're talking about. It's negative 6 to negative 1. It's an interval from negative 6 to negative 1. That's the increasing interval in our graph. Okay, now let's talk about decreasing. We are decreasing if f of x sub 1 is greater than f of x sub 2. Meaning, and I know that we all know that we're decreasing on this part, so I'll just say, here, let's say that this is x sub 1 and this is x sub 2. f of x sub 1 is a greater quantity than f of x sub 2. So as long as that's true, then we must be trickling down our graph. 
So that is our decreasing. And again, I want you to train your eyes to see that we are decreasing. I know it's from this ordered pair all the way down. Well, geez, for infinity, for the rest of the way, because that's what the arrow means. So we're starting on the x-axis to decrease right here at, neg at, excuse me, at 3.5, and we never stop. So when we're decreasing, the interval to describe that is we start at 3.5, and we don't stop. So we go all the way down to infinity excuse me, all the way up to infinity, up the x-axis, that's when our graph will be decreasing this way. So we've got increasing, we've got decreasing, and now we've got constant. Constant is when x, f of x sub 1 is equal to f of x sub 2. So we have a constant interval, let's say right here, and we know that we're constant here. If this is x sub 1 and this is x sub 2, f of x sub 1 and f of x sub 2 are exactly the same, which means that we'd be constant all the way through this interval. Okay, just a nice plateau right here. So we, we know that we're constant from this ordered pair to this ordered pair, but again, that's not how we describe it. We describe the interval from this value on the x-axis to this value on the x-axis. So we are constant from negative 1 to 3.5. So we are constant from negative 1 to 3.5. One last little note I need to make, you'd see that I have not used brackets. When we're talking increasing, decreasing, and constant, we never use brackets because we're never going to be increasing or decreasing or constant at a single point. It's always over an interval of values. And think about it like this. Let's say you go, you start walking up a staircase. As you start walking up a staircase, you are increasing along that interval. But if you stop in the middle of that staircase, at that single point, you are not doing anything. You're not increasing anymore. You're not decreasing. You're not constant. You are not increasing or any of the other two, on a single point, you are increasing along an interval of values. So that means we do not include this end point, because that's just like the bottom of the stairs. We don't know what your body's going to do. You're just standing there. And when you get to the top of the stairs, we do not s include this point either. So we are never going to be using brackets when we're talking increasing, decreasing, or constant. We will always be using parentheses. I also wanted to point out one more thing about this picture. There are no local maxima in here. There are no local minima in here. Some people think that this is a maximum and that this is a maximum. And that's just not true. A local maximum will only occur when the graph changes from increasing to decreasing. It must change from increasing to decreasing. There must be a top of a mountain it cannot change from increasing to constant. This is not a local maximum. Same thing over here. It has to be increasing to decreasing, not constant to decreasing. This is not a local maximum. This is not a local minimum. A local minimum must only happen when the graph changes from decreasing to increasing. And obviously that's not happening here. The graph just starts right here. So this is not a local minimum. If I look back at my picture, I can see that this maximum is, is happening because the graph is changing from increasing to decreasing. So there is a top, a, there is a peak. And same thing for the local minimum, it's changing from decreasing to increasing. So this is a valley or a very bottom of our graph. If constant is in there, we do not have local maximum. If the graph is just beginning, this is not a local minimum. Okay, so I've got two examples I wanted to look at just to do this. Um, we might need our calculator again for this, so get your calculators out. So the first thing I am interested in is um, possibly just looking at the graph of this x cubed minus 3x. So I'm going to pull up my calculator. I'm going to go to y equals. Um, I'm going to clear out anything that I already have there. Let's go x cubed minus 3x. Oops. Let's try this again. x cubed and then minus 3x. Okay. And again, I'm just going to press zoom 6. I know that I just did that in the previous um, 
example. So there we go. Okay. And what I'm really interested in is my uh, maximum and minimum because I know that I can see now that I'm increasing all the way to this point and then I start to decrease to this point and then I'm continuing to increase that way. So I do need to know these values. I really don't need the Y coordinates. I'm interested in the X coordinates. And you can use your calculator to confirm this, but I know right now that this is a negative 1 X value and this is the positive 1 X value. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a graph now that I see it on the calculator. Again, you can go and actually calculate your maxima and minima if you want to, um, to, to prove what I'm about to tell you, but um, this is the graph. So we've got this, this, this. This is just a quick sketch as a visual, okay? And this ordered pair is the ordered pair negative 1, 2, and this ordered pair is the ordered pair 1, comma, negative 2. Again, we're really only interested in the x coordinates. The y coordinates at this point are just a dis, uh, detract, a distractor. So I'm talking increasing. I see that we're increasing in two different intervals. We're starting to increase at negative infinity, and then we're increasing all the way until we get to this point. Okay, but understand that we're talking about this part of the x-axis. We're increasing on this chunk of the x-axis. Describe that from negative infinity all the way to 1. We're increasing all along the x-axis until we get to this point. Excuse me, negative 1. Sorry, negative 1. To, all the way to negative 1. The 2 is irrelevant. We don't need that. We are also increasing somewhere else. I know we're decreasing, 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 decreasing. But then once we get down to this point, that minimum, then we start to de uh, increase again. So we're increasing again from this one all the way to the rest of the way, really. So we're going to pick up again at one and go to infinity. So we're increasing in this chunk of the domain and this chunk of the domain. Again, the y coordinate is irrelevant. It's the x coordinate that matters. Decreasing. We are decreasing in between these two points. So that must mean that we're decreasing in between these two. Let me change colors. We're decreasing in between the negative one and the positive one. So decreasing in between these two values from negative one to positive one. We're not using brackets anywhere for the reasons I just said. And constant, we're not constant anywhere. So I'll just put the null set, or just not put that we're constant. Okay, so that's our first one. Our second one, I've seen this graph plenty of times. You can go ahead and check it on your calculator, but y equals x cubed is simply this curve right here. There we go. Like that, and you can check that on your calculator if you wish. Um, I don't see any maxima or any minima. I don't see any point in the graph where I'm starting to come back down at all. It looks like I'm increasing, 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 increasing. I'm interested to see what happens at zero, but after that, I definitely know that I'm increasing, 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 increasing. Some people don't know exactly what's happening here, but I have to tell you, we are increasing the entire way. Some people think that you just level out right here at zero. No, it crosses through zero, zero, but think about it. If you're just cubing your inputs, if you go very close to the right of zero, let's say 0. 0.00001, and cube it, you'll get a positive. And if you go to just to the left of zero, like negative 0. 0.00001, and, square, uh, and cube that, you'll get a negative. So our, our increasing remains every negative value cubed is going to remain in the negatives and every positive value cubed is going to remain in the positives and zero cubed of course is zero so we're increasing the entire way here so how do we describe increasing here well we're increasing all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity there's no point where we stop increasing so what would we say for decreasing nothing and what would we, would you, what would we say for constant nothing so this is our increasing, decreasing, and constant. Again, we're not using brackets anywhere. And uh, we'll practice this more in class. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and you have a good one. See ya.